Hello, Ghostbusters. Yes, of course they're serious. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn, and today is part two of the Richie is Sick series of deck tech videos where I am all sorts of unfun right now. And uh, some of you out there are probably going to go, why is he wearing a hoodie with the hood up indoors? Because I've gotten that one before, and to you I say, I enjoy it, so back off! Anyway, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons over at patreon.com slash quarantined Capricorn. That's Yuck Fousey, Squirrel, Noah Vincent, and Brittany at the Bruker Relief really tier. And then, of course, Terrence Robach, our forever CPU savior. Grateful to you guys. Uh, trying to grow over there. I'm hoping to get some new patrons at just the $1 level, even just a buck. So if you want to know how you can help out the channel... Right now, that's the best way you can help out the channel. For just $1, Patreon suggests 3 as the minimum. Forget that. $1. I would appreciate it greatly. You get notified 24 hours in advance of whatever deck techs are coming up. You get to vote on some stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. There's some other perks for higher tiers over there that are really, really cool, I think. But uh, even at just a buck, I think I think it might be worth worth checking out. I hope it's worth checking out. I don't know. I'm too sick to think straight. But the deck techs need to keep coming, and that brings us to today's deck, which is called Geist and Guile. And the idea here is we're doing a new Willow Geist brew, um, and we're back in Saltai. And the reason is because now we have access to Likeness Looter, which is just insane with Willow Geist and with a few other cards that want to be in this deck anyway. A lot of times we can spend one or two mana and turn Likeness Looter into an absolute behemoth of a creature with tons of value with evasion, and it's kind of absurd. Uh, before we break down the deck, please like the video. Please, I'm begging you. Help this video get out to more people by clicking that like button, and if you haven't been to the channel before and this is your first time, you can safely hit that subscribe button because I promise I put a lot of work into the content and the decks are worth your time. I promise. Ah. Uh, also, catch me live on Twitch Monday through Friday. That's twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn. Because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming, even when the doggos are barking behind me, it's all good. Let's check out the deck. All right, my friends, this deck is... I know I say this about every deck, but I'm just in love with this deck. It is so cool. There's so much synergy. And it goes off in ways you don't really expect. So... The core of the deck, we're starting with Willow Geist, one drop, one, one trampler, but whenever a card leaves your graveyard, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And also as a bonus, when it dies, you'll gain life equal to its power, which can matter in this deck for sure. Um, so the more ways we have of exiling cards from our graveyard, especially one at a time, um, because if we exile multiples all at once, it's only going to count as one trigger for the Geist. Uh, we can just grow this really quick. And since this is just one mana and co can come down on turn one, and it can it can be swinging for a way above rate amount of damage on turn three, four, whatever the case may be. Um, and it just, it turns, it puts so much pressure on the opponent that they're forced to have to deal with it. But if they're spending their two or three mana removal on a one mana dude, then they're not dealing with some of our other threats. And a lot of times we, we can just kind of out-tempo the opponent because of that. But we've got new tools in Wilds of Eldraine that make it even crazier. Uh, most notable is Likeness Looter. Uh, I started toying around with just one copy of this thinking, yeah, this might be a cool thing to include. And it was so good, I absolutely had to buff up to four. Not only is this a 1-1 flyer that can loot, and therefore help us get things into our graveyard to exile for Willowgeist and for some of the other synergies in the deck that we'll get to later, but we can pay X and turn this into a copy of any creature in our graveyard that costs X. So in the case of Willowgeist, like, we just pay one mana, 
And now we have a flying Willow Geist that's getting a bunch of counters, getting buffed up way above rate, just like Willow Geist would, except it's also got flying, and it can still change into other things in subsequent turns. So it gets really crazy. It accumulates counters quick, and then it could turn into other stuff and get even nuttier. We'll get to that in a bit, but Likeness Looter is just nuts in this deck. I was trying to think, what's the best deck to put Likeness Looter in? And I think it's creatures that are low to the ground that have a big target on them that if they stick it around, they are going to impact the game in a huge way. But they're still cheap, so Likeness Looter can become them without using up your entire turn and having to dump like four or five mana into it. Um, and this deck absolutely fits that bill. So I think Likeness Looter is perfect for this deck, even if you don't take into account the fact that it can loot. But the fact that it can loot and we want things in the yard just makes it perfect. We've also got one Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Now, in this deck, we're not gaining as many abilities as we normally would in a deck with an Agatha's Soul Cauldron in it. So we're only running the one copy. It is legendary so we're kind of fine with just one. But if we get that one down, even if we're not getting any abilities, being able to exile something from our yard, which puts a counter on the Willow Geist anyway, and then if that thing is a creature, we put another counter on whatever we want. Like two counters for one card, and it fits into our synergies, while also having the silver lining value of being able to exile things from the opponent's graveyard if there are problematic cards we need to get rid of. All of that is really good even by itself, but sometimes we will hit a creature with an activated ability, and then obviously the Soul Cauldron becomes better, and the primary target for it is actually the Likeness Looter. I kind of consider the Soul Cauldron to be a fifth Likeness Looter in this deck, because if they deal with the first one, which they absolutely will do everything they can to deal with it, or it gets way out of hand, you'll see in the games, uh, if they deal with the first one, if we happen to have the Soul Cauldron, we can start turning all of our creatures with counters into Likeness Looters, which can then all start turning into Willow Geists, or some of the other creatures in our yard. So, it gets it gets pretty crazy. Uh, let, let's start at the bottom of the curve now and talk about all of our card choices. There are some other new cards that we'll talk about as well. We've got four Death Bonnet Sprout. Because this is another good turn one drop if we don't have the Geist. We jam it on one, it mills a card every turn, helps us get our creatures in the in the yard and other cards in the yard too that, that we want there. Um, but then eventually becomes a big threat. And that's what you'll notice about every card in this deck. It comes down, it doesn't look very menacing at first, but it can very quickly turn into an above rate creature. This could be a 3-3 three, three with plus one plus one counters on it every turn for just one mana. The Willow Geist can get super huge for just one mana. The Likeness Looter, two mana, comes down, turns into whatever we want for very cheap. God damn you. And then <laughs> gets really big for just, just that small amount of mana. Um, we've also got four Seed of Hope. Uh, because in this deck, where every other card other than Seed of Hope is a permanent... This card is insane. It's like a strictly better opt. It is opt, except we also gain two life, and we get to put things in our graveyard to fuel our graveyard synergies. It's like opt with strictly upside. It's insane. Any deck that's running all permanents with the exception of the Seed of Hope needs to be jamming this card because it's just, it's that good in the right kind of deck that can support it. And this just digs into all of the synergies. Not only that, but the life gain helps us survive against aggro in the early game, which is nuts. Which the life gain from the Willow Geist also helps with. And there's a couple other cards we'll get to as well. Um, we're also rocking one Cruel Somnophage and three Urberg Lurgoyf. I think maybe this should be two and two. Um, but this could really be any any combination of this package that equals four. You could go four Cruel Somnophages. You could go four Urborg Lurgoyf. Um, the thing you want to keep in mind, what really makes them different, uh, Cruel Somnophage is going to be better against other creature decks because it's going to be bigger than the Lurgoyf if they've got creatures that are going to the yard, either through trading with your creatures or chump blocking or whatever the case may be. Um, Somnophage is going to end up being bigger than the Lurgoyf. But the Lurgoyf is better against control decks because if they have any way of exiling graveyards, um, that could outright kill a Somnophage 
it could go to 0, 0 and just die. Whereas with the Lurgoyf, it'll at least stick around as a 0, 1. Uh, and then you can start putting stuff in the graveyard again and pumping it up and making it bigger as time goes on. And what's really good about both of these cards, they both have the ability to, with the with the Somnophage, it's, it's an adventure. With the Lurgoyf, it's a kicker. They both have the ability to also fill up our graveyard with stuff, which is nice silver lining. But what really makes these crazy is they are two mana creatures that in the mid to late game are huge. And that works perfectly well again with our Likeness Looter. So if we got Likeness Looter down on two, and we turned it into a Willow Geist, and it started accumulating counters, and now it has two counters, three counters, maybe four counters on it, and it's a 5-5 five, five flying Willow Geist, now we could just pay two mana and turn it into a Lurgoyf or a Somnophage that still has flying, that still... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sick. <laughs> Leave me alone. That still has all of the counters it got from Willowgeist. And it's absolutely huge. So let's say there was three counters on the Likeness Looter. Now you turn it into a Lurgoyf and you have five creatures in your graveyard. Well, now it's a 5-5 five, five flyer with three plus one plus one counters on it. So it's an 8-8 eight, eight flyer out of nowhere, way earlier in the game than you'd expect. And you're just smashing through an Alpha Striking for the win. It's just crazy. We've also got four armored scrap gorgers and some people have argued that this card doesn't fit the deck but this card is perfect man not only does this allow us to go a little bit less on our lands and have a little bit more actual business cards in the deck um because we can make mana with this alongside the seed of hopes which are good at finding lands if we're desperate um it allows us to run less lands overall in the land package but we're ramping and putting out things quicker that part's obvious, but just like every other card in this deck, this is an above-rate creature swinging in for damage once it achieves its stipulations, which in this case is getting the three oil counters from exiling three cards um, over the course of, you know, multiple turns. So, just like the Death Bonnet Sprout that very quickly becomes a 3 3 4 4 5 5 whatever for the only one mana... Scrap Gorger, after a couple turns, is very quickly going to flip into a 3-3 that you only invested 2 mana into, and could potentially even get bigger in some other ways. Um, but what really makes this card make sense in this deck is the fact that it exiles a card when it becomes tapped. So early in the game when you're using it for mana to ramp, or a little bit later on in the game when you're just swinging with it as a 3-3, either way you get to exile a card. And if you exile a card from your own graveyard, you're pumping up your Willow Geist. So there's just a ton of synergy there to ramp, to color fix, to trigger your Willow Geist, uh, to have another big beat stick that's coming in that cost you way less than it should have to have a creature of that size. It's super good in this deck. We've also got one copy of Mosswood Dread Knight and one copy of Tenacious Underdog. Both of these cards are amazing in this deck because both go to the graveyard and then and can then be cast from the graveyard effectively with Underdog being blitzed out of the graveyard directly on, onto the battlefield, drawing you a card, swinging in all that good stuff, and Mosswood Dread Knight being played as an adventure out of the graveyard and drawing you a card, and then eventually being replayed as the creature. Both of them are can be like taken out of the graveyard to get value, and when they're removed from the graveyard in that way, they will trigger our Willow Geist. So it's even more synergies. Now, I'm only going with one of each, because once we have one of them online, we don't really need another copy. So I would rather have two, dre uh, one Dread Knight and one Underdog than two Underdogs or two Dread Knights because it gives us more versatility. Uh, and once we have one of them, we don't really ever need to do another one. We're not really going to have very many turns where we've got eight mana up and absolutely nothing to do except two Underdogs in our graveyard, for example. Um, so even though I'd like to fit more of those because they're both insanely good cards... Uh, we're trying to fit a lot into this deck, and it's hard to make rooms, so just one of each so that we have the ability to draw into being able to do that, but we don't have any of the redundancy of multiple copies, I think is pretty good and where we want to be with those cards. Moving on to the 3-drop slots, this is where things get spicy. We've got two Slowgurks, 3-3 three, three Trampler. When a land is put into our graveyard from anywhere, we put a counter on him, which happens a lot. We've got all three channel lands. We've got tons of way of self, tons of ways of self milling. We've even got the lightness looters now, which could dump a land into our graveyard if 
you know, Slogurk is on the field already, which is nuts. And then we can remove three three counters from it to return it to its its owner's hand if it's targeted by removal or whatever the case may be. Uh, and when it leaves the battlefield, we get to take up to three land cards from our graveyard and put it into our hand. All of this is synergistic because if it leaves the battlefield and we remove land cards from our graveyard, that's going to trigger Willowgeist and put counters on it. Also, if we make a copy of Slogurk, we can then remove three counters from the copy to return the copy to our hand and then replay it as the original thing that made a copy. Now, this isn't going to be as effective with Likeness Looter, but it's super effective with the next card I'm going to talk about, with, which is Invasion of Amonkhet. So we jam this in the mid game. We mill three. We also make our opponent mill three, which helps with Cruel Somnifage. And then they discard, we draw. So obviously there is value there, but we can swing in immediately with one of our flying threats or trampling threats. Flip this, flip this and now this can come in as a 4-4 copy of Willowgeist, which... A Willow Geist that's already starting at base 4-4 before it gets Trample is crazy. Uh, or it has Trample before it gets Counters is what I mean. Uh, we can turn it into a 4-4 Likeness Looter, which isn't as good. Because then as soon as we turn it into another creature, it's not going to be 4-4 anymore. So we kind of lose part of what makes Lazotep Convert so good there. Um, but sometimes it's still worth doing if we have the ability to like turn it into a Looter which can then turn into a Lurgoyf, and instead of just turning it into a Lurgoyf right out of the gate, now we have a Lurgoyf with flying, so that can matter. But the other way that Lazatep Convert is really sick is it comes into play as a Slogurk, if Slogurk is in our graveyard. I'll call him Slow Jerk, because he is kind of a jerk. But um, we make a copy of him, and at any time we want, you know, we're utilizing slow, slow Jerk for the things we want to. We're getting in for damage. Maybe we're blocking. But maybe our opponent uses a removal spell. Or maybe we just want some extra value. Now we can remove three counters from the Convert copy of Slow Jerk. And return it to our hand. But it returns to our hand as Invasion of Amonkhet. So we can replay it. Mill even more cards. Make them discard again. Draw again. Attack it and flip it into Convert all over again. Sometimes if we're in the mid to late game and we're just, we need to outvalue our opponent, right? We need to just go over the top. Sometimes that's worth doing and it can be super sick when it happens. And I'm almost positive we do it in at least one of the games and it's pretty wild. But the best three drop in the deck is Tyvar, Jubilant Brawler. This guy does everything. First of all, activated abilities of creatures we control can be activated as though they had haste. So... We've always been using Scrap Gorger for that. Super good. We play a Scrap Gorger. We could just tap it for mana immediately, which is nice. Um, but now we have the added bonus of being able to use the Likeness Looter right away. So we can also tap it to loot, draw a card, and discard a card, set up our graveyard with what we need, so on and so forth. And sometimes setting up our graveyard with what we need leads to the other ability of Tyvar, minus two. Mill three cards. You may return a creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sometimes we're grabbing just the Scrap Gorger and using it for mana right away, which is which is pretty good synergy. Sometimes we're grabbing the Likeness Looter, popping it into play, being able to loot right away. Or sometimes we're just bringing an enormous threat back, like Willow Geist to grow over time, or the Lurgoy for Somnifage to just go to town, or maybe the Dread Knight. If we milled the Dread Knight instead of it dying and we don't have the opportunity to play Dread Whispers to get it exiled so that we can keep the, the, the cycle going with the Dread Knight, we can just get it back uh, with Tyvar and go to town. Also, the plus one to untap a creature is sick because it lets us get more mana out of the Scrap Gorger. It lets us exile more things and get more triggers on the Willow Geist. It lets us reuse a Likeness Looter. Or it lets us just swing in with a giant Lurgoyf or Willow Geist or flying Lurgoyf Willow Geist and then untap it to use it as a blocker after we swing. So there's a ton of versatility in Tyvar, and this is his home. He is the man here. We love him. Three copies, never doubt it. Uh, moving on to our four drop slot is where we have all of our removal. Now, 
Some people have argued on stream that I should probably have some cheaper removal in here, some go for the throats or whatever, but there's a couple things we need to keep in mind. First of all, we need to keep our non-creature count as low as possible. Secondly, we need to keep our non-permanent count as low as possible for Seed of Hope. And thirdly, we don't really want to be using removal on their early threats. We want to be putting pressure on them and setting up our board as we curve out for the most part. So we really only want removal for those super problematic cards that come into play turn four and later, like Shieldred, uh, like, like other bombs, you know? Um, so Skyfisher Spider is probably the absolute best card. Not only does it count as a creature for Lurgoyf and Somnophage if it goes to the graveyard, it counts as a permanent for Seed of Hope so that we can get it back, but it's got reach, it can block well, we can sack one of our creatures, which we kind of want creatures in our graveyard anyway, so sometimes that sets us up to destroy any permanent, not just a creature, which is sick and can sometimes make the difference between winning a game but then if that wasn't enough we have even more synergy in that when this thing dies we can exile it from our graveyard to gain an amount of life equal to the number of creatures in our graveyard so not only do we gain a bunch of life to come back from aggro uh in a lot of situations just like a big willow guys can do for us just like seed of hope can add some life negligibly against aggro we have all of these cards that can kind of gain us life on key turns um and really keep us alive against aggro so not only is that life game re life gain relevant but when it happens the skyfisher spider gets exiled from our graveyard so again it triggers the willow geist and puts another counter on the willow geist so this thing is just rolling in synergy for this deck it's the absolute perfect piece of removal i do wish we had a little bit more room in the deck for some more removal um but we honestly don't really have room for any more non-creatures and tyvar invasion of amonkhet and seed of hope are just way too good and the one Soul Cauldron are just way too good. We can't possibly replace those with like go for the throat or something. It, no way. The deck's an engine and it's wonderful. But we are making room for one more piece of removal and it's the only other four drop and that's Urtai Resurrected. Um, can come down as a 3-2 on a key turn, deal with the most problematic threat that they have or maybe even counter a spell. Um, they do get to draw a card, but a lot of times in the mid to late game, we're rolling over them with tempo advantage. So being able to drop Urte at a key moment, uh, Urtai, Urte, Urtai. Back during Tempest, I pronounced it Urte, but I'm pretty sure it's Urtai. But anyway, I digress. In the mid to late game, this as a fifth piece of removal to hit just, just that right target so that we can close out the game, um, and really get there over the course of just a couple more turns can be crucial. We can blow out the opponent by killing something and blocking when they don't suspect it. A lot of good value with Urtai here, so absolutely jamming one of these as our only other 4-drop, trying to keep the deck as cheap as possible. Our land count is kind of low, but supplemented again by the 4 Scrap Gorgers and the 4 Seed of Hopes that can find land early, which is nice. Uh, the land is what you'd expect, one Adawara, one Takanuma, one Besaiju. They go to the graveyard if you channel them, which is really good because going to the graveyard will put counters on Slow Jerk, and being in the graveyard, we can exile them for value in general. Um, we got to be careful about how much mana we have available untapped on turn two. So we've got three Dark Slick Shores, four Llanowar Wastes, and three Yavamaya Coasts um, as our pain lands slash fast lands and then in order to not have to use too many pain lands we're going with four death cap glade three dream root cascade and then we've got just one murex uh the the one the color fixing a little bit earlier on on just the right turn can sometimes matter a lot um so it's better than just a normal colorless land for sure and I don't think we can afford to add more than one copy because this is a three color deck with no triomes, but the one copy works if it's just the one copy and it fixes our color the turn it comes into play. But having access to that ability where we can pay three and tap it and make a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Might artifact creature token is huge. Those mites can be sacrificed to the Skyfisher Spider to nuke things and we don't have to get rid of an actual threat. 
Uh, they can also just provide us value when we're completely out of steam, which Mirix will do that for any deck. Uh, but another thing that's worth noting is we can actually use our Agatha's Soul Cauldron to turn a Might token into a Likeness Looter uh, and start to get back into our engine that way. So there's a lot of little silver lining value additions in this deck, and I think the list is just right. Uh, like I said back at the beginning of, of talking about this deck tech, uh, the Lurgoyf and Somnophage, the split between those two, is really the, the one X factor I'm not 100% sure of yet. I think I would probably... I think in later builds I'm probably going to go up to two Somnophages and down to two Lurgoyfs. But either way, a package of four there is perfect. With the self-milling and the card draw, I think that's the right number to consistently have at least one in the yard or in your hand and if it's in the yard we can copy it if it's in our hand we can play it and then eventually copy it when it dies um so i think that's the right number um but feel free to experiment with how many lurgoifs and how many somnophages they're both great uh they're both a little bit better at certain things but the deck itself super fun super awesome i lost a couple games last night uh before i was actually recording for the deck tech footage itself and someone on stream was like this deck is bad go to the next one and i'm like dude i just had some insanely bad luck i'll show you what this can do and i i was like determined and i i hit that play button and whew, i won like four in a row and it felt good it felt good to prove my point and uh the deck is the deck is as good as as you might think it might be. I suggest trying it. I love it. Likeness Looter is awesome. I'm sick and tired, and I'm going to shut up now, and we're going to check out the games. Let's do that. This is good. We'll keep it. We'll start with... Yavamaya Coast. Play the Willow Geist out. Lenore wastes. Uh, we'll straight into a to a scrap gorger here, and we'll swing one. Man, going first is so powerful. It's just too much. It's just too much, man. At least we have a creature in our yard now. Tyvar. Minus two. Bring back the Scrap Gorger. Put a counter on the Willowgeist. Use the Scrap Gorger to play a Sprout. Exile the Tyvar. Put another counter on the Willowgeist. Swing for three. Celestis, sure. We will mill another card. Dreamer Cascade. Opponent has nothing in their yard. Alright, let's start with Can't Wake Up on Ourselves. Could destroy the Celestis. Three, four, five, six. We could play Virtue of Persistence if we did, but we could always just kill the Virtue of Persistence itself. All right. Here we go. Go for the throat. That's just rude. Black. Exile. Dark Slick Shores. And we'll gain 
gain four life instead of three now. And then we'll uptick, untap the scrap gorger. I believe in you, friend. Black. We'll exile his go for the throat. Get our third counter. Play the Somniphage. Swing with the Sprout. And then we're gonna exile Likeness Looter to put a counter on the Sprout. Feels pretty good. Now, whenever we put a counter on something, it becomes a Likeness Looter, which means it can become a Willow Geist. Or if they kill the Cruel Somniphage, it can become a Cruel Somniphage. Which is going to be very, very nasty. Alright, you're making everything else much stronger for us. In fact, I think we might just win. Mill. Too many risks. Your story's not finished yet. We didn't put any more creatures into the yard. Trying real hard here. Swing 11. Play a likeness looter. Hope to god he doesn't have a wrath effect and end the turn. Lots of big nasties. Do you have a sweeper, sir? It's got no creatures in the yard. You could exile a scrap gorger. Turn whatever we want into a likeness looter that can tap for mana if we want to. the cityscape leveler. Put a counter on the Lurgoif. And does he have removal? For all of our big nasties. We will find out. But I'll tell, I'll tell you this much. Unless he's got Instant speed sweeper. I'm pretty sure we just win here. Swing. What you got for me, Rigel? Go for the throat, sure. Which just makes our other creatures even bigger. Good, keep it. Waste, sprout. I'm 
mill a scrap forger, play a dark slick shores, swing, play another scrap forger, pass the turn. my sprout. <coughs> Imagine cutting down a man's sprout. Still get to mill something though. Man, more dark slick shorts, huh? Exile the cut down. Minus two. Mill some stuff. We, can win. we will put out a scrap gorger. We will use the scrap short gorger with Tyvar's static ability to play something else. We will exile. I guess Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Chances of us being able to get it back are pretty slim. End the turn. Now, we can loot with the Likeness Looter because of Tyvar as well. And we will do that. We'll draw a discard here. Dump the Dark Slick Shores since we can't really use it. Eat a dark slick shores. Mill some cards. I'll draw something. Now, what we really want is to attack and flip that invasion of Amonkhet before he gets to four mana for Wandering Emperor the best way to do that. One, two, three, four. We will turn into a cruel somnophage. Become a 5-5. Five, five. That it flies, and then we will attack the invasion of Amonkhet. Okay, he is gonna go for the throat it. It's okay though. It is not the end of the world. We're gonna go black. Exile wedding announcement. Uptick to untap. Tap for blue. Exile go for the throat. Play another likeness looter. And we'll end the turn. We can loot again at the end of turn. Dump something else into the yard. Does he have Wandering Emperor? He's got Urtai. What's he going to hit? Likeness Looter, Tyvar. They're all pretty good. Alright, in response, we are going to loot. We'll dump the Takanuma. Draw a card. Sky Fisher Spider may sack another creature. Got a lot of options here. <coughs> We're gonna start with Seed of Hope.
grab another Tyvar. Then we'll minus two this Tyvar. Bring back a likeness looter. Really want to swing at that damn invasion of Almond Kit. So we're going to do it this way. that. We'll exile the Sea Chrome Coast. Draw a card off of the underdog. Feels pretty good to me. No blocks. He must be sweeping. Maybe we should double block. Nope, he didn't have the sunfall. Appreciate the follow, devs. Appreciate the follow. Is he waiting until we flip Amonkhet to sunfall? Or does he have a wandering emperor? He might have a wandering emperor. Well... We're going to make him have to have a Wandering Emperor. Because that is lethal. I want it to be even bigger. And no dice. No dice. And he scoops. So I guess we had lethal anyway. I'm gonna keep this. Past 3 a.m. and I'm really tired. This is a pretty good opening hand, though. We can Willow Geist on one, Seed of Hope into something on turn two. And then swing with the 2 2 Willow Geist, at the very least. Gibble, gibble, bobble. Seed of hope. We'll take what we can get. Good, sir. <coughs> He's going to kill it in response, so we gain less life. That's fine. Next turn, we slow gurk. The slow jerk, and he will probably have a lightning strike for it. We are flooding like crazy. Which is super unfortunate. No blocks. He's clearly got a play with fire he wants to use and not a lightning strike. For that, he must have... No? He's got no dragon. Okay. Good, good. Very good. If 
Well, I'm glad you're you're back and playing, devs. It's a fun game. It's definitely got its ups and downs. The meta's a little crazy right now, but it's a good time. All right, we're gonna do it like this. Hopefully, have two creatures that are too big for him to burn out. Smash for five with a big ol' slow jerk. Let's force him to use up his removal. Okay with that. I am okay with that. This is three. So theoretically we go like this. We could turn it into a big old Lurgoyf. One, two, three, four. So it would be a four, four. I think it's better to hold up the well, no, because if he's got burn... Alright. Lur Lurgoyf it is. We're racing pretty hard here. End the turn. I think we're okay. We've got lethal next turn, I'm pretty sure. We channel Ottawara, it goes to the yard and puts a counter on Slogurk. So all we have to do is not die and not let him kill our creatures. Can he do an extra 7 damage to us? I don't think he can. Nope. We win. We win. Land goes to our yard, puts a counter on Slow Jerk, and we swing for 10. Faster than Mono Red. We're gonna keep this. This looks good. It's gonna be a little bit painful, but we'll make it work. Mono Red's just jealous because they only have small fast creatures and not big fast creatures. Alright, we'll start with the Death Bonnet Sprout. I think we want to play the Underdog on two. Force him to use his removal on that rather than the Lorgoif. Seems reasonable, and then we can kick the Lurgoyf once if we don't have something better to play. Oh, really? That's a bummer. All lands? What are the chances we've got five lands in our starting hand? Well, four, and we draw one, and then we mill three. That's crazy. We'll get rid of Thalia. Pick your poison. If he kills the underdog, the werewolf just gets bigger. Do have an Urtai resurrected. I think we flash in the Urtai and blow him out by being able to block with the Urtai as well. 
I would like to play the Willow Geist, but I think that makes the most sense. Let's pass the turn. Thalia, sure. Here, you can draw a card. And we'll just eat your entire board. Just the entire board. It's fine. Place another Adeline. Do we want Adeline dead? Or do we want Thalia dead? I think... Thinks Adeline needs to die. <coughs> no attacks. See, now we start blitzing the underdog back from the yard and that starts putting counters on Willowgeist every turn, which is really strong. Really, really strong. Although, you can't really attack through Thalia. Maybe it's still worth it to draw. Yeah, he blocks the Skyfisher Spider with the Fortress and then blocks the Underdog. Wait, what? Really? You're gonna let Thalia die? Okay. This is sick, guys. We get to kill Thalia. And then when the Skyfisher spider dies, we get to gain life. And when we gain life, the, the spider comes out of our yard and puts a counter on the Geist. So that goes- that grows the Geist as well. Yeah, Likeness Looter was about to become a Lurgoyf. We'll keep this. This looks good. Hmm. What's more important? Playing Willowgeist on one and nothing on two? Or playing nothing on one and then Dread Knight on two? Probably Dread Knight. We'll just draw a card. So next turn we can play the Geist and the Dread Knight. Thalia. Well, that's pretty okay for our deck. Play the Geist. Play the Dread Knight. Go to you. Why, hello there, Thalia. Peacekeeper. He's gonna have to get rid of the Skyfisher. Because we're about to cause a whole lot of problems if he doesn't. But I also don't mind double blocking Thalia here if he swings. Either one of these trading for Thalia seems good to me. If he kills the Geist, we gain a life and we only lose a Geist. If he kills the Dread Knight, we can just bring it back. I 
I can't believe he didn't do the Skyfisher Spider, though. That is wild to me. <coughs> All right. We will take out the Peacekeeper. Next turn, we gotta draw a card with the Dread Knight. It's really the only thing that has to happen. But if we top deck a Geist first, we can actually get a counter on the Geist. When we pull this out of the yard to draw a card. That's fine. Ossification. We'll get it back eventually. Probably better. To go. I mean, Tyvar could grab a Willow Geist. It's not going to be very good, though, right? No. We'll go Seed of Hope, Dread Knight. Let's see, we'll grab Likeness Looter. Maybe we'll just play Likeness Looter instead. Nah, we'll go Dread Knight. It forces him to have to either discard a card or lose the Guardian to trade with the Dread Knight. And then we just replay it again. This card's really good in this deck. Maybe we should have more of it. Alright, hits it with a Cathar. That's fine. We're high enough on life, we can afford to kind of grind out this game. So I'm not worried about these tempo plays that our opponent's making quite yet. Just have to decide what order to do things in. I think we go Likeness Looter. We pay one whopping mana. Become a Willow Geist. Then we play Tyvar. Minus two. We'll mill and hopefully hit something to pull out. Uh, those are options. We probably want something so that he can't swing very effectively, right? Death's Bonnet Sprout would be nice, and the Willow Geist would be nice, but I feel like they're a little greedy. I think we just need the Underdog to trade with a Brutal Cathar if he tries to swing. Because he would have to swing with both at the Tyvar in order to kill it. And if he does, we kill the Brutal Cathar get back our Mosswood Dread Knight, and that seems really good. I'm fine with him killing Tyvar if it means we get back our Mosswood Dread Knight. Okay, that's fine. We got rid of a card in his hand, that's almost as good. Oh god, Soul Cauldron. Soul Cauldron. Don't think we want to Soul Cauldron yet. Oh, we don't have another blue. That was a mistake. That was legitimately a, a mistake. <coughs> it's okay. We'll do this.
change it from a Willowgeist to an Underdog. But it keeps the counter from the Willowgeist, which is nice. So smash him for four. I think we're ahead on tempo. I really wanted to play Slowgurk and then Amonkhet. And then attack the Amonkhet. Oh god, ossification, what's he gonna hit? He thinks Slowgurk's the bigger problem? Okay. That's fine. He needs to double spell so he can eat my underdog, right? And he just did. You are one lucky human being. You need to top deck a land. That's not a land. It's pretty decent though. What can we exile and get an ability from? Anything? Not really. If we kill the recruitment officer or the guardian of New Banalia. I think we want to Amonkhet to get rid of that last card in his hand. Because that's really strong. What is that last card? Oh, it was a Valorous Stance. Thank God. Alright. 9-9 nine, nine, Cruel Somnophage. Confirmed. Cards nutty. Cards real nutty. Recruitment <laughs> officer. Start with this. Makes things real big. Oh, we don't have the black. We don't have the black. Could you imagine? Could you imagine not having the black? take his guardian of new banalia end the turn we now have the ability to discard a card to give our Willowgeist indestructible. He is going to be able to swing for potentially as much as 6 damage. He kind of needs to scry. I think he... I guess not. I guess he'll just do that. he did that yeah that's uh, just the win man this deck just goes off when it when it works 
Yes, I did. I smoked him. I had a 9-9 trampler and an 8-8 trampler. Or, no, it was a 9-8 and an 8-8. It's gross. I think we start with an underdog here. On land. Geisty boy is in play. you got for me, Orange. Thank you for the nectar, Yogi. Self mill extraordinaire. It's actually a lot of good opportunities here. I kind of want to copy your body launderer. But instead I'll do this. Graveyard to hand. Alright, alright. Unsealing the necropolis. See the end, infernal grass. You get a lot of control in this deck, huh? Playing Somnophage. what we have here. I can't really quite swing yet, huh? Alright, alright. End the turn. You win this round. My day is going, my friend. I've been sick the last few days. That is why I am unkempt and my voice is a little raspy. And I've been stressed out with some stuff, but for the most part, hanging in there. What do you got? Italian for two. Fair enough.
Oh, no way for me to block that. Goodbye, Tyvar. Discard, baby. I like that the cruel somnophages are the same size. Turn it into an Avon Heart Stabber. I think we'll just do this. And then we'll do this. Welcome to Flying Willow Geists. <coughs> oh god, Slow Gurk is so good in this deck. At me, you're gonna do it. Oh, three four. Interesting. I'll take it. I can take that. Think for a second before. Okay. That's a big ol' flying cruel somnophage. Would you look at that. A big ol' flying cruel somnophage. Hey, I appreciate that, Yogi. It is September right now, and all subs are 25% off. I feel bad, because I feel like everyone that's already wanted to sub already subbed. No trample, right? We'll just do that. Oh, baby. Flying Cruel Somnophages. 
are kinda sick. Don't you quit! Don't you quit! I got shit to do! Now, I could have turned this other Willow Geist into a cool Somnophage as well. And he would have kept the two counters and been a 17 17 cool Somnophage, so he actually would have been 19 19. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible, so honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there. And if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately, that's somewhere up that way also subscribe circle below do all the things